In this video, I have a super quick tutorial showing you how to create a multi-agent chatbot using LangGraph, Knowledge Graph, and Long-Term Memory to build a powerful agent chatbot for your business or personal use. If you've worked on the RAG project, you've likely encountered the issue of how static knowledge bases can limit the system's ability to handle new or changing information. RAG systems rely on these knowledge bases, which are fixed and don't update based on new user interactions. This is similar to how graph databases and relational databases have different data structures, which makes it hard to compare or translate queries between them. In the case of RAG, the problem is that when the context or information changes, the knowledge base doesn't adapt, causing the system to provide outdated or irrelevant answers, especially problematic when users ask questions or give inputs that the system hasn't seen before. For example, in RAG systems, if a user asks about a new topic, the system might not have the right information, or it could use old data that no longer applies. Just like how translating between Cypher and SQL can cause errors or mismatches due to differences in data handling, translating user input into relevant answers can be tricky when the knowledge base is not dynamic. Do not forget to mention that AI agents face memory bottlenecks in complex tasks. Traditional large language models context windows limit-based agents, and have difficulty integrating long-term conversation history and dynamic data, which limits performance and easily leads to hallucinations. That's where graffiti comes in. It builds dynamic, temporally aware knowledge graphs that represent complex, evolving relationships between entities over time. It ingests both unstructured and structured data, and the resulting graph may be queried using a fusion of time, full text, semantic, and graph algorithm approaches. So let me give you a quick demo of a live chatbot to show you what I mean. I will ask the chatbot a question. What sizes do the tiny birds wool runners in natural black come in? If you look at how the chatbot generates the output, you will see that when a user enters a query, the agent loads product data from a JSON file and creates episodes in a knowledge graph while also setting up a user profile Jess, who is interested in buying shoes, it finds Jess's unique node and the ManyBirds brand node for reference, a tool function. It gets shoe data is defined to search the graph for product details and format them into a list of facts. A chatbot using GPT 4.1 Mini is created with temperature zero, instructed to act like a smart, helpful salesperson who gathers Jess's preferences. It searches Jess's knowledge graph connections for related facts, builds a fact string, and uses it to respond, always logging conversations for memory. If needed, it calls the a get shoe data tool to fetch fresh information before replying. So by the end of this story, you will understand what graffiti is, how it works, what the difference between graphrag and graffiti is, and how we're going to use lang graph, knowledge graph, and long-term memory to create a powerful, agentic chatbot. Stay tuned throughout the end of this video. If you guys haven't followed me, I highly recommend that you do so, so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. Lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn the notification, bell like this video, and check out previous videos because there is a lot of content that you will definitely benefit from. So that thought, let's get right back into the video. Graffiti is an innovative tool that stands out for its ability to build dynamic time-aware knowledge graphs, which are critical for applications that need to understand complex relationships between entities over time. Unlike traditional knowledge graphs, graffiti is uniquely designed to handle the fluidity of information, making it particularly suitable for applications in sales, customer service, health and finance that need to adapt to changes in data. It leverages OpenAI's LLM for reasoning and embedding, ensuring state-of-the-art performance in proxy memory applications. GraphRec and Graffiti are both methods that use knowledge graphs to make large language models smarter, but they focus on different things. GraphRec improves retrieval by connecting information better through a static knowledge graph, helping LLMs find and understand data more accurately and quickly, especially when the knowledge doesn't change often. In contrast, Graffiti acts like a dynamic memory system that constantly updates over time, handling both structured and unstructured data, 
tracking new information, and maintaining historical context. While GraphRag is great for making searches smarter, Graffiti is designed to help LLMs remember past conversations and evolving information, making it ideal for real-world applications where things are always changing. Before we dive into our application, we will create an ideal environment for the code to work. For this, we need to install the requirements.txt. The next step is the usual one. We will import the relevant libraries, the significance of which will become evident as we proceed. Graffiti Core is a framework for building and querying temporally aware knowledge graphs, specifically tailored for AI agents operating in dynamic environments. We are going set up logging function creates a root logger and sets its level to error. It will only process error and critical messages. It then creates a console handler that outputs to standard output and sets its level info, although only error messages will pass through due to the logger's level. A formatter is set up to control how the log messages look, showing the logger's name, log level, and the message itself. Then, they set up the Neo4j URL, username and password. It then creates a graffiti client instance using these credentials. Then I try to build database indices and constraints through the build indices and constraints method, printing a success message if it worked or printing an error message if something went wrong. They developed an ingest products data function that reads a JSON file, manybirdsproducts.json, located inside a GraphTy folder one level above the current working directory. It loads the list of products from the file and loops through each product using the graffiti client to add each one as an episode. For each episode, it uses the product's title if available, includes the product's data, excluding the images field, and attaches a source description, source type, and the current UTC as the reference. After defining the function, it is called immediately with the client instance to start the ingestion process. They set the user's name to Jess and created an episode in the database stating that Jess is interested in buying shoes using the sales bot as the source and recording the current UTC. It then searches for Jess's node in the database using a hybrid search method and retrieves her node. After that, it similarly searches for the ManyBirds node and retrieves its UUID for later use. The edges to faxy string function takes a list of entity edge objects, extracts the fact from each edge, and combines them into a single string where each fact is listed on a new line starting with a dash, beginning the entire string with an initial dash. Then they define an asynchronous tool function called get shoe data, which searches the graffiti graph starting from the many birds node to find information based on a query, formats the results into a list of facts and returns it as a string. The function is wrapped in a tool list and it tool node is created to manage it. Finally, a chat open AI model is set up with zero randomness and is connected to the tool, allowing the model to call it during conversations. After that, they make a state type dig to hold conversation details, messages, username, and user node. The chatbot function takes the current state and checks if there are previous messages. If so, it formats the last message into a graffiti query string. It searches a knowledge graph centered around the user's node to find relevant facts, turning them into a facts string. A system message is then created instructing the AI to act like a skilled shoe salesperson for many birds, always selling while being helpful and prompting it to gather important info about the user's shoe size, needs, style preferences, and budget. The system message conversation history is sent to the LLM for a response. After the AI responds, we log the episode into the graph for future searches without blocking the chatbot's flow. Finally, the chatbot returns the AI's response wrapped inside a messages list. So, they first create a state graph to manage the chatbot flow and a memory saver to track conversation history. Then we define should continue state config, which checks if the chatbot's last message triggered a tool. If not, it ends. If yes, it continues. They prepare an initial state for the conversation with a dictionary that includes messages containing a user message asking, what sizes do the tiny bird's wool runners in natural black come in? along with username and user node UID for tracking the user. 
and we pass an A config dictionary with a unique thread ID generated by UID to uniquely identify the conversation thread. They set up a conversation interface using widgets, output for displaying messages and preparing a config with a unique thread ID and a user state with the user's name and node UUID. The process input function handles sending user input to the conversation graph. It appends the user's message to the output, creates a graph state containing the latest input and stream events from the graph. Each AI response is appended to the output in real time. If there's an error, it prints the error message. The onSubmit function grabs input from the text box and triggers process input when the submit button is clicked. Graffiti not only advances the field of query equivalence checking, but also shows promise for practical applications in database management systems, highlighting the tool's potential impact on real-world scenarios.